welcome back to part two of the RM Prep USB tutorial. I'm going to very quickly now cover the other buttons that are on the uh, RM Prep USB form. So hang on to your hats, here we go. Uh, first of all, I want to show you the Drive Info button. This um, allows you to look at any sector on the drive that you've got selected. I'll look at sector zero to start with, which is of course the master boot record. Now this partition has been formatted with RM Prep USB as a FreeDOS drive. Uh, it's a FAT16 drive and you can see here that some of the strings in here, this is a standard master boot record um, as put on by Vista or Windows 7. And this area from here to here is the master boot record. That's the second sector. Drive info always shows you two sectors. If we use the same command again, but we type in P1 to look at the the first partition. So RM Prep USB looks at uh, where the first partition is. It's sector 63, and it loads the information in that sector. OK, so that's uh, drive info. Now I'm going to make an image of this flash drive. So if I choose drive to file, using the image tools here, um, and I can select a file name. So I'll call it um, fred.image. And it's asking me for the start sector. So Normally, most people would just choose the default, so zero for the start sector, P all meaning all partitions, so it's going to back up all partitions. This drive actually has only got a 20 megabyte partition, so um, it's going to be very quick. And then uh, start by to the file position, well, we want to start at the beginning of the file, so it's just, just choose the defaults basically. And you probably didn't see that very well, but it's just uh, finished the, uh, the procedure, so it's now backed up. 20 megabytes and a bit because the second partition will also be backed up to my file. Now I can, if I want to, I can uh, erase this uh, USB drive. So let's, let's look at the clean button. I've got uh, no user prompts ticked, so just to make things a lot quicker, it asks me if I want to clean it. So I say yes, and it's now wiped the drive. So there should be now nothing on the drive. So if I do drive info now, look at zero and it's all zeros, and drive info, P1, and there's nothing in there, because there's no valid partition table. So now if I want to restore the image again, um, if I do file to drive, I can choose my fred.image. Uh, again, just choose the defaults, 0000, because you want it to write to everywhere. It'll write the data back onto the drive, rebound the drive and now we should find that we've restored the data so if I do P1 on there and there's our there's our information back again so in this way you can image a USB drive uh, you can zip up the file if you want to save space on your hard disk and then at a later date you can restore the uh, the drive by unzipping the file to a .image file and then um, using file to drive to remake your USB drive. Now the other thing we've got here is file info so if you want to actually have a look at a file so let's look at fred.image um, file start byte of zero because we'll, we'll just start from the beginning of the file to look at it um, and you can see here it's pulled up the, uh, the, the, the first sector in the file and because uh, RM Prep USB has realized that this is a, um, an, a master boot record it's decoded it for us, so it's given us the, the values from the partition tables as it was before. And if we look at, um, sorry, if, it, if we look at the partition P1, again it's decoded that for us.
Other options on here are install grub for DOS. Um, I've got no user prompts ticked, so it's going to use the defaults that I used last time. When you're first using RMPREC USB, I'd advise you to leave that unticked just so you can get used to the options. Um, so if you just tick that, it'll install grub for DOS straight onto the USB drive. And then it'll copy over the GRLDR file, the grub loader file, which is um, in the RMPREP USB application folder. You can, in the same way, install SysLinux to that drive. So uh, if you just answer the questions as you want. And it's done. Now, when SysLinux is installed, it uses the minus FMA options, which means it also installs a, uh, a boot record uh, into the master boot record as well as the partition table. So this now has, uh, it's, it's had two boot boot loaders installed basically. The, the master boot record has been overwritten by SysLinux as well as the partition boot record. And uh, we can look at that if we, if we look at P1. You can see that it's written a SysLinux bootloader code into the partition boot record of that USB drive. And um, there's no way to get rid of that now in RM Prep USB except to reformat the drive because the partition boot code is not it's not overwritten by anything else in, in RM Prep USB. Um, the only other alternative would be to install Grub for DOS into that. So if I if I untick Grub for DOS and I say partition boot record, so install to MBR no. It's now going to use that command to install to the partition boot record, which is done successfully, and copy over the grub loader file. It's finished. Now if I look at drive info for that partition, it's replaced SysLinux with the grub for DOS bootloader. The next button is the create an ext2 file system. So we're using this, you can create a file on the hard disk and format the file as an ext2 file system. And this file can be used by Linux as a persistent file, as a read-write file. So a common name would be casper-rw for the file. And you can give it a size, usually you'd use a large size, about a gigabyte. I'm using 50 just for the sake of speed. and And it's failed because the, the drive is only 20 megabytes in size, so it's not going to work. But that's just a quick demo of uh, what it does. Uh, test speed. Test the speed of the drive. And again, I'll give you a quick demo of this. So it's, it's OK. It's just, it's just warning you that it's going to write to the drive. So uh, there's a possibility that the, drive, the contents of the drive could be destroyed. However, it's non-destructive and that it, it, it writes back what it reads. So it shouldn't destroy the drive, but it's just a warning that it might. Uh, so here you can see it's reading the drive. We've got 20 megabytes a second read, and the writes are going to be a lot slower. And there we are, it's four megabytes a second write. And it's come back and told us to use F6 or F7 to view the results. So I'll just press F6. And you can see it loads up Excel. And we can see the results of all the drives that I've tested using this because it adds to the file every time it runs the test. Uh, and you can see that the The results are here, USB 2 is my drive, 20 megabytes a second and 4. So those are the results of the uh, speed test. And there's a couple of options you can use to, uh, to read the CSV file that it's produced. The next thing to do is quick size test. Quick size test will check the size of your flash drive. And here you can see it running. It's usually quite quick, but this particular drive I've got is a, a cheap drive that I bought off eBay. And uh, it's supposed to be a 16 gigabyte drive, but actually it's only about 2 gigabytes, as we'll see in just a minute when this completes. 
I'll just pause the video now and uh, unfreeze it uh, when it's finished. It'll take a minute or so. And there we are, it's reading back the blocks and it's got lots of errors. And you can see at the end here, it's actually failed. And it's told us that the drive is actually about two gigabytes of usable space. So I'd recommend that you always use that quick size test on any new USB flash drive that you get, just to check that it is what it says it is, and in my case it isn't. Okay, and now to go through some of these options up here. Um, these are fairly self-explanatory. F3 will bring up the uh, RM Prep installation folder in Explorer, so I'll just click on that. And there we go. So this is where RM Prep USB is actually installed. It's been installed to my program files x86 because I've got a 64-bit um, system um, RM Prep USB. And you can see in here all the files that um, are used by RM Prep USB. There's a decimal point version which uses a dot, and then there's the normal version which uses whatever your your local country uses. View file information is the same as the file info button. Um, this will boot from an ISO file using QEMU. So instead of QEMU booting from your USB flash drive, you could choose an ISO file and boot directly from the ISO file. You can also choose to have a virtual hard disk when you boot. So for instance, if you boot off an XP ISO file using this option and you have a virtual hard disk of say 10 gigabytes, you can actually install XP onto that virtual hard disk from the, directly from the ISO using this uh, Control F11 feature. Um, the next one down, Shift F11, is boot from virtual hard disk drive. So having installed XP uh, onto, your, onto the virtual hard disk, you can then boot to the virtual hard disk straight to XP under QEMU. Uh, QEMU is very useful for, for this sort of testing, but unfortunately it's very slow. Uh, so um, although it's handy to do quick testing with QEMU, uh, it does take rather a long time and there are much better virtual emu emulators or virtual machines available. Uh, the one I've skipped over is make grub for dos ISO from drive. So if your USB drive uh, is a grub for dos bootable USB drive, uh, by clicking on this option it will make it will turn that into an ISO file and if you try to boot the ISO file it will boot to the grub for dos bootloader and uh, load the menu that you have on your had on your USB drive it'll, it'll basically load it off uh, uh, at the ISO file so you can burn the ISO to a CD or DVD uh, and boot from your, your CD or, or your DVD so it does what it says on the tin it makes an ISO from the from the USB drive that you've got selected. It could be a, it could be a hard disk, it could be a flash drive, whatever. Uh, it's up to you, however, to make sure that um, that it all works. And you can test the ISO by using boot ISO file, using QE emulator after you've made it. Uh, this creates 1.44 megabyte MS-DOS floppy boot image, as it says, um, from, uh, it, this is uh, from the code inside a DLL in, that's in Windows, so it, there's no there's no Microsoft code used by RM Prep USB um, it, other, of, because of copyright reasons. Uh, this option will ask, will um, calculate the MD5 or CRC32 or SHA1 um, checksum values of a file. So this is very useful if you download uh, an ISO file, say from the internet, and it's a couple of gigabytes. Um, you need to make sure that it's not corrupt. So this will calculate the MD5 checksum of that file and you could compare it with the, the actual value it's supposed to be on the website. And Control X of course is uh, exit from RM Prep USB.